You are listening to Western Iowa's information leader, KCIM. I'm Nathan Cones, here with your midday news for Tuesday, January 9th, 2024. Travel is still not advised throughout the Carroll Broadcasting listening area this morning after more than six inches of snow fell during the overnight hours. As of 7 a.m., the Iowa DOT had had classified all roads in the region as completely covered and no towing recommendations are in effect for Crawford, Carroll, Green, Audubon, and Guthrie counties. That remains true here as of the noon hour. Images from state snowplows show nearly the same picture. Complete coverage of the most traveled roadways, such as U.S. Highways 71 and 30, as well as Iowa Highway 141. Conditions are likely even worse along the more rural county roads. Iowans who are in a position to do so are encouraged to remain home when possible until snow removal crews have had more time to clear the roadways. Conditions are available online at 511ia.org. The Carroll City Council tabled a proposed new ordinance during last night's meeting that would have required owners of vacant properties in the community to register them with the city. City Manager Aaron Koiker says this program was developed as part of an overarching effort to spur residential construction and development. So in an effort to establish new and available housing, the city staff has researched ordinances that require vacant properties to be registered within the city. Essentially, this penalizes property owners that allow properties to sit vacant for an excessive time and enhances our abilities under 657A to claw back those properties. This code allows property owners to rehab or sell without penalty. It's a fairly common ordinance throughout the state, so we would like the city to look at the first reading on this and uh, move forward with it. The ordinance targets properties disconnected from utilities and unoccupied for several years or empty lots that are not adequately maintained. It would also apply to properties that have remained on the market for over 12 months. The proposed registration fee is 1% of the total assessed value with an additional $3,000 fee for uninsured or underinsured properties. Koiker says the ordinance is not intended to target well-maintained structures or lots. Most cities have had their water meters pulled or haven't had city utilities for a number of years. We could probably check with electric to make sure they don't have, I mean, that's kind of what what we'll base it on is how long haven't they had city services to really put that into place. Several council members expressed concern that the public could view this ordinance as an overreach by the city government. Ward 2 Councilman Jason Atherton says it is unfair to punish somebody for a kept up property they are not interested in selling. I would rather have the individual owner motivated to do something with the property than government stepping in. Here I am, big government, I'm coming in to change something. So, Ward 3 Councilman Kyle Bauer says it's important to understand their intended goal, which is to generate housing construction and address long-standing nuisance properties. So, I think we need to make it clear to the public, this isn't about taking somebody's land. Mm-hmm. It's about cleaning this junky yes. property up right. next to my house or your house. It's not fair to the neighbor of that neighborhood. City Attorney Dave Bruner says the ordinance will not directly lead to the city taking property from private owners. A very large part of the ordinance is to identify these properties. We can take action if it's a vacant property. We can take other legal action to acquire ownership of those properties. So I don't see this ordinance as being an enforcing title grabbing ordinance for these properties. I I see it as a a registration. A stepping stone. You guys can get your hands around these numbers, whether it's 15 or 20 or 12, whatever it is, and then you can make some decisions on what you want to do. Due to a lack of consensus on how to proceed, the council opted to table the ordinance for now and return to it at a future meeting. Under the initial wording, all properties, be it residential, commercial, or vacant lots, would fall under the ordinance. Moving forward, the council intends to separate the properties by usage to avoid confusion. And three individuals are in custody after a multi-county high-speed chase Monday afternoon. At approximately 12.37 p.m., Shelby County Dispatch notified the Ottoman County Dispatch of a reported theft from a business in Harlan. Officials described the vehicle as well as the direction the car was traveling. An Ottoman County Sheriff's deputy initiated a traffic stop with the reported vehicle north of the intersection of Highway 71 and Highway 44. The driver, identified as 31-year-old Jake Scripter of Omaha, took off from the Sheriff's deputy and headed north towards Audubon. Scripter, Scripter continued on Highway 71, reaching speeds of over 120 miles per hour. The chase pursued uh, continued all the way to Highway 141, continuing through Manning. Scripter ended up parking the vehicle in a building in Aspen Wall, abandoning the car, and taking off on foot with the other two individuals. The three were apprehended a short time later. Scripter was transferred to the Audubon County Jail and is currently being charged with the looting. The other two occupants were transferred to the Shelby County Jail on theft charges. 
The Audubon County Sheriff's Office was assisted by the Audubon Police Department, Shelby County Sheriff's Office, Carroll County Sheriff's Office, Manning Police Department, Crawford County Sheriff's Office, and the Iowa State Patrol in that pursuit. And we do need to step away for just a moment. We'll be right back. More news on the way after this on KCIM. Tune in tomorrow morning during the 7 o'clock hour to hear from Chaplain Angelo for a rise and shine. Be inspired, reconnect, and reflect with a quick inspirational message. Tune in tomorrow for a rise and shine during the 7 o'clock hour. Brought to you by St. Anthony Regional Hospital. I'm talking with Barrett Glassnap with Flooring America. Barrett, what is your job title? My job title is a sales professional. And how long have you worked for Flooring America? I've been there five short years. What do you do out at Flooring America? At Flooring America, there's quite a different variety of things that I do. Probably the most common thing is basically advice or consultation on which type of flooring that a customer wants. Other than that, we design, we go through the products, the colors, etc. We shop for the best pricing available that we can get from the different companies. Measuring and estimating, ordering and installing floors is the other nuts and bolts of it. And so why should customers shop with Flooring America? The customer service at Flooring America is, is second to None. We have become friends with the customers. We end up playing pickleball in the same group. We get sweet corn. You play cards. You really become part of a person's life. Meet Barrett and learn more about Flooring America. Stop in Flooring America, 1318 Highway 30 West in Carroll. Welcome back to KCIM's Midday News. I'm Nathan Cones reporting. Manning Regional Healthcare Center recently welcomed Amy Osbar as its newest occupational therapist. Osbar brings over two decades of experience catering to patients across diverse ages, ranging from three months to 105 years old, underscoring her commitment to individualized care. She is certified in various specialized therapies, and Osbar's experience spans neurological rehabilitation for conditions like strokes and multiple sclerosis, orthopedics handling joint replacements and fractures, as well as specialized treatments for blood flow restrictions, vestibular rehabilitation, and others. Her skills extend to conducting workstation assessments and aiding children with developmental milestones, autism, and more. Osbar emphasizes her gratitude for joining the MRHC team. She previously served at Methodist Hospital, Glenwood Resource Center, and various nursing homes across southwest Iowa. You can contact 712-655-8100 to book an occupational therapy appointment. And Thomas Resthaven in Coon Rapids is hosting their first outreach program for community members coming up Thursday. Social Services Director Rachel Hoffbauer says Th- Thomas Resthaven will be hosting a Mental Health Matters program with Plains Area Mental Health Center as a way to be a resource for Coon Rapids and sur- the surrounding communities. January is Mental Wellness Month, so we thought that would be a good time following the holidays. Time gets long for people. It's kind of a dark time of year. Days are short. So just kind of want to make sure people are aware of that there are resources out there and things that they can do, whether it's for them or a loved one or a family friend. The program is at 6.30 p.m. at the Thomas Test, uh, Thomas Rest Haven Dining Room. Hofbauer says the program is open to the public and anyone can attend. Anybody can come and participate. Plains Area Mental Health is going to be coming in and just kind of letting us know what we can do to maybe help ourselves get through a hard time, anything that we're looking for, for that help for counseling or any of those resources, what we need to do to kind of get that started. There's no need to register, and because of the Iowa weather we have, the program could be postponed to a later date if it does happen to get canceled. Hofbauer is looking forward to the event and potentially more outreach programs in the future whether it be mental wellness, whether there are other resources or information venues that we can be a resource for other people to come in if there are certain topics that they want to learn about or know about that are not as informed as they'd like to be. That's something that we are also going to be looking into. You can follow the Thomas Resthaven Facebook page to stay updated on this and other upcoming programs that they'll be offering. Again, Mental Health Matters is a program coming up Thursday at 6.30 p.m. with Thomas Resthaven and Plains Area Mental Health Center. And the U.S. Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals issued a ruling Monday upholding the constitutionality of Iowa's agricultural trespass laws. The laws in question were signed by Governor Kim Reynolds in 2019 and 2021 to prevent unauthorized access to agricultural production facilities with the intent to cause physical harm or economic damage, but were held up by district court rulings that found they violated First Amendment protections. However, the new federal decisions overturned the prior ones. Reynolds lauded the ruling as a win for both Iowans and the nation, emphasizing the vital role Iowa farmers play in global food production. She says Iowa farmers feed and fuel the world and are an essential part of the global food supply chain. No longer will people 
will be able to gain access or unemployment to agricultural production facilities with the intent to cause physical injury or economic harm. We will always stand up for the security and safety of our farmers and their land. Similarly, Iowa Attorney General Brenna Byrd hailed the federal appeals court's ruling as a triumph for Iowa farmers and property owners, saying, For too long, our farmers have battled with trespassers, people lying to get jobs, and hidden recording devices. But not any longer. With today's win, we will enforce Iowa's agriculture trespass laws, strengthen security, and put those fears to rest. Iowa Secretary of Agriculture Mike Nagg echoed those sentiments, affirming the court's decision as a victory for Iowa farmers. The legislature and Governor Reynolds enacted these laws to safeguard our ag community and protect our food security. It is welcome news that Iowa producers can now be protected from trespassers, and it sends a clear message to those who maliciously target our livestock farms. It's not certain at this time if the ruling will be appealed to the higher courts. And that is going to be wrapping up your KCIM Midday News for Tuesday, January 9th, 2024. I'm Nathan Cones reporting.